Creating Composites in Luminar 4.1 For this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my thought process when I'm creating composites in Luminar. Uh, this is the first time I've actually done this one so what you see is my thought process as I am creating it. What you do in Luminar is the same with masks, it's the same as Photoshop as well. So what I'm doing here can be applied to Photoshop if that's how you prefer to do it and then bring it into Luminar to put the image together. For this composite I'm going to use two images that you've seen previously and I'll put them in the screen now and with these images I'm going to blend them together to make the composite that you see now. Slightly longer video, not too long though, uh, and it lets you see the processes that and the thought processes that I go through when I'm doing them and you'll notice that the two starting images are totally different in light and then by the time we get to the end and we get to this image the light could be real so, although you know it's not. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, now that we're in Luminar, I'm going to show you the basic principles of compositing images together. And I'm going to use this image here just to show you the basic principles here. You may recognise this image from a couple of videos back. All I've done with the image is flipped it the other way. Right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new image layer. And from the other video, the previous video, I'm going to use This Is Glencoe and you'll see when this image drops in that the aspect ratio has been compromised and it's made to fit inside the image that I have previously. We're not concerned about any of the top area, I'm only really concerned about this area here just to give it a little effect coming through the woods. Remember these are composites so they're meant to be fun when you're doing them. right? So I'm going to edit the mask and I'm going to use the brush to do it. Luminar creates the mask already and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in what I want to see. So if I very quickly check my brush is up at 100 and the softness is at 100, later on we can adjust these to bring them down. So if I start painting here you'll see exactly or hopefully get an idea of what I am going for with this one. Okay, there is a colour difference so don't worry about that just now. And remember that when you're doing this, we have the option of changing the aspect ratio of this image. So, what I'm doing is I'm just putting in a wee bit of groundwork here, just to check that everything is going to work. And I'll go up there, I want some of that rock in just to hide what's going on in the background there. And some of the rock there, right, you see it curves around this tree here. Do I want that? In this case, I possibly do, but we will see we're not concerned about colour at the moment. The closer the images match each other colour wise the better, but at the moment we can deal with this. Right, so I'm going to take the brush size down so that I can go in for more detail so that you get the idea of what we're actually aiming to do here. As I say, I'm still painting at 100%. And don't worry, for this video what I'll do is I'll show you the basic principles, then I'll go on and edit the entire image and show you the, the entire image at the end. So that you're not sitting watching me edit and choosing areas and getting rid of other areas. But for this just now, we've got everything in that we want. Right, this is the decision time for this. Am I quite happy with that? Do I want that to go down? So as in further off the screen. I like this rock that breaks the corner here and it gives us a little more depth into this. So now my decision is, that area there is going to be okay to blend. My decision is around this area here. We have to go in and see how the tree works here. So basically, what you do is you zoom in and you can paint or erase or press the X key in the keyboard. I'm going to press X and you'll see that I'm now erasing. So what I'm doing now is I am going in to see how much detail is actually lost when I do this. Does the image work when I do this? So if I go in there, I'm just drawing very carefully around this. As I say, I'm doing this very quickly for the purposes of this video. You go in, take your time. The smaller the brush as well, 
the easier it is to cut at the edges. I'm saying cut at the edges, to blend at the edges is probably the best word that I am looking for. So I'm going to take that down there and I'm going to take it all the way down here because I want to see what happens in here. And this, I haven't run through this one first. So you are seeing what I see for the first time with this. And you're seeing the considerations I make with it. So I suppose that in a way that's a good thing. I just thought the two images would work well together. And the reason I had to flip it was because for me, aesthetically, water running from right to left, I think throws my eye out slightly. So that's why I changed it, knowing that this water is going to run left to right and the trees as well are going to match it. Right, so I'm going to leave it at that just now and zoom out. Command and zero to zoom out, right. Few issues here, what's happening with this part here, what's happening here. This you can deal with, and I'll show you how to deal with that first before I get back into here. You can see that this, this image is quite contrasty, the one that we've put in. But if we go into a blend, and we can blend that through. I would soften the brush now to do this area. Because what you're looking for is the eyes not to be drawn in. So we're going in for paint, we're going in for a raise. We're jumping between the two of these to get the blend the way you want it. Okay, it'll look more natural. When it gets to the rocks, you can go in with a hard edge here. But this is the area that I'm concerned about the most. Is down here. So, you can see that's going on in the background there, right? So if I do that, I'm going to take this up so that you can see this a lot quicker. Right, and I'll just click once there. Right. If I take that and that tree for me there is a wee bit too close. So I'm painting back in at the moment. Does that run through there very nicely? I'm unsure. What I'm going to do, as I say, remember this is the first time I've done this one here. So I'm going to transform the layer knowing what I have. Right, and I'm going to bring that down a bit. And possibly take it out there a little bit more. And the reason is because I'm watching this tree here and I'm seeing that if I curve that round it's going to go straight into that tree. So I am just aware of what's going on because we can't create a composite and then have something that doesn't look right within it. Not that you're trying to fool anyone but it's something that you'll be happy with as well. So that's us back in and you can see the mask changes. Uh, the mask doesn't change, so you have to go back in and repaint some areas, like this area here now. And what I'll do is edit mask, brush, and in this case I'm going to erase. So I'm going to take that out there, right, and take it down there. And then I'll go back into the paint mode. Now for me, that is a bit more believable because the water can down here, we don't know where it's going. And I know I've got those rocks there. So I can do that there. And then I can take out this area here. Oh, press X, take out this area here. And then for me, what I would do is I would go back in, uh, zoomed in now, using the paint, I'd find the form of the rocks. If I go back in and paint there, and by the form of the rocks, I'm meaning the edge of the rocks. So you're going in and you're looking for them, taking them up there, up there. There's a nice form here, which helps break and separate that from the background. So you would go in and take that one out as well. And as I say, so that you're not sitting watching me editing this for the, <coughs> excuse me, so that you're not sitting watching me editing this for the first time until I get it the way I want it, you can get the idea, hopefully, you get the idea of what's involved in the composites. And as I said at the very beginning, it's a good idea to have matching images to start with, have matching images to start with, uh, 
tonally light wise. I'll go on and edit this and then I'll show you how we bring the two images together for the colouring and toning. I'll zoom back out so as you can see where I am just now. So that's where I'm sitting just now. So you'll see how much this changes during the edit. Right, with this you'll notice I went back in to 01 JPEG layer and I moved that tree from here to here to give a more natural feel. I did that through the layer transform. Right, with this I'm quite happy with it. Uh, as you can see the contrast is entirely different from both images. So what I'm going to show you now is how to get back in and adjust the contrast. This is the first time I've done this image, so it's not even as if I've went through a run with this, but I'm going to show you how I would do it and how I would tackle it to see if I'm happy with the final image. I would go back into layer 1. And in layer 1, I'd go back into layer 1, and in layer 1, I'd add a new adjustment layer. In this adjustment layer, I am going to adjust contrast. And two different ways of doing it, right? During this process, you will see the other image appearing. This It just happens with the image because it's updating the image as a whole. Right, so I'm adjusting the accent there and I'm going to push it again. But remember, this is only affecting the background layer. I'm also going to get into the light and I'm going to do a smart contrast. Because I originally, for this background image here, I originally added a matte look. So I'm trying to bring back what's not there. So it may work, it may not work. So far, it looks as if I'm getting to where I want to be. So I'm going to get into AI structure. I could increase the blacks. We'll give that a go. Go into light. Go into advanced settings. That's it more of a contrast to the image now. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back and turn on that top layer. Hopefully, with what I've done, you will notice that there is more of a match to this in terms of contrast. So there, it's not too bad. It's not brilliant, but it's not too bad. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to adjust this new layer that we put in to match the background. And I'm going to do that via its own layer. I'm going to put the edits onto that layer. I'm not going to put them onto a layer above because the layer above will affect every layer through. So I'm going to put it onto this layer. So I'll go into the light and I'll put a smart contrast on. It's a bit more balanced. I know we can see the greens and everything here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to AI Enhance and this is only slightly, this is a completely different image shot in completely different light. We're trying to blend it and make it look as if it was there. Next thing I am going to do is AI structure. So I'm watching this updating as it's doing it. And this, I'll be honest, it's not too bad at that. The one thing that I can do that I did to the background image was the Orton effect. So let's go in and see. And this is before we put a what. We'll put a what over everything, but then we'll play with the colours and then stamp the layer. So I am going to go to about there with this. That's a bit softer, that's actually a bit better because you see we've got light coming in through here and it would be hitting everything here. Right, for this I'm going to leave it at that. Just for the purposes of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. So you see there's quite a bit of process in this and hopefully this video doesn't take too long in doing this. Right, so I'm going to add a new adjustment layer which will affect all the layers overall. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back those greens. So I'm going to get into a colour and I am going to just test the saturation around there, advanced settings. The greens are affected by the yellows as well, remember, so I'm just going to pull them back a bit. But this is affecting my entire image. I am trying to match the entire image up. That's not too bad at that. Okay. What I'm now going to do is a new adjustment layer again. Add new adjustment layer. This time I am going to go in and add a lot. This lot will adjust any colours that I see and try and make them all similar. 
And the reason I went straight away to Red Trace is because I just as I adjust the greens, that's why I went there straight away. I'm gonna get back to Red Trace for this. So it's, it's dropping some of the greens and making them quite desaturated. And it's also dropping some of the color out of that. So I'm gonna choose Red Trace. So there's the what. The default setting for the what is around 30. I can pull that back. Right, I'm quite happy with that so far because at least you've seen the process uh, involved in creating a uh, composite. It's the same idea if you do it in Photoshop, it's the exact same idea. Last but not least, another adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer is for me to pick everything out. So remember, you're seeing this as my walkthrough process and what I'm thinking about it. I'm actually thinking, to be honest, to get down into a look here without adjusting, so I'll just give it a go. And I have my favourite looks, and my, one of my favourite looks is Camden, which, for me, tied that image together. I'm quite happy with that. Knowing that in Luminar 4.1, I can pull back the effect with the adjustments amount. I understand it has desaturated the image slightly because of everything I've used, but I am quite happy with that. Hopefully that made sense, and hopefully you can see the thought process that goes into creating composites. I made a couple of adjustments there, and as I say, one of them was move that tree. That was by adjusting the bottom layer. And these are composites, they're not meant to be real, they're not meant to fool anyone and say, yes, I took this photograph. It's so that you understand layers better and so that you can create images from nothing. Now, this is not a complicated one, this is only two images and you saw how long it took to put that together as well. And this is only two images, but it's a thought process. That's the main thing. When you get into the blends and you're blending areas together, the bigger the brush, the softer the blend, and sometimes even at that, you have to turn down the opacity of the blend as well, just to get something looking more natural. Right, the image we ended up with, you could agree or disagree that that's not real. That That's fine, that's fine. The fun is in creating something new from what you already have. So hopefully you get something from that, and hopefully you enjoyed seeing everybody's got a different thought process. And that's mine. Just depends on the images and what I'm putting together. In other videos, I'll add more layers, but now that you've seen this one, I'll, they won't be as long. These videos won't be as long, and it'll, it'll be a faster edit to bring you through to the final composite. So I can speed that up. But as I say, hopefully that lets you see my processes. Everybody's different with that. If you've enjoyed this video, big thumbs up. If you'd like to see some more videos, please feel free to check them out in the channel below and consider subscribing because that would be absolutely fantastic. Thanks again for watching.